This is a film of a Mosler three movement time lock circa 1916. The earliest versions of Mosler's time locks had this gold crackle finish on their front doors. The rest of the time lock had a satin bronze finish. The crackle finish was only used for about a year and then they went to a bronze finish and that also only lasted about a year and then later they went to the satin nickel finish for the remainder of their production. What we are exploring on this particular lock are the configuration of the movements. You will see first of all that these movements say Yale on them. You will also see that these are a typical Yale size L coffin style movements which have a special rectangular insert which allows the uh, coffin shaped movements to be installed in the rectangular design that was meant to uh, be used in these Mosler movements. The reason for that is that early on in the production of the Mosler movements they ran into a problem with their supply of the regular Mosler movements. So they turned to Yale and Yale had a contract with Seth Thomas for their movements and Yale then supplied specially modified movements for these time locks. The modification was in addition to the special inserts was an additional spur gear that was added to each of these movements so that the dial would move in the opposite direction to which a Yale time lock would normally uh, move. So and the reason for that is that the snubber bar here has to be pushed to the right as you can see here to unlock or put the lock off guard. In Yale time locks the snubber bar was always moved in the opposite direction so they needed to have the dials move in the opposite direction for them to work here. This was a very rare set of movements because these were only produced for a few months until Mosler was able to get their a regular production in, in place for the movements that were to fit into this time lock which were the regular rectangular Mosler movements. To the best of my knowledge, there are less than five time locks known that come with these modifications. We're now going to explore how this was done. We've now removed the uh, movement mounting plate as represented by this piece here from the case itself. And as you can see, as was common in many of these locks, there's a set of springs that were that the that this movement plate floated on. And then above that plate would go another spring and then a screw to hold that movement plate in place. And that was to provide shock resistance. So what we want to show here is the way that Yale, these Yale movements were substituted for the Mosler movements which Yale uh, needed to provide because of the uh, shortage of movements at the time for uh, Mosler. So I've already removed the screws that, the, that would hold this in. So out comes this and this is the uh, 
the uh, uh, Yale and then this is the part that was used to convert the mounting of uh, the movement so that this would fit where this would be typically a coffin style um, shape to the rectangular shape here and to show that this was actually meant originally for a Mosler movement we have here a typical Mosler movement and as you can see it fits perfectly within this uh, mounting plate and in fact it is a direct drop-in replacement so here we have the uh, Yale movement and this movement has been modified from a regular Yale movement in that there is an additional spur gear located here which allows the dial to move in the opposite direction that it would in a normal Yale uh, uh, time lock. So here as you wind this uh, the dial will uh, move uh, counterclockwise and as it unwinds it moves clockwise which is the opposite way that is normally done for a Yale movement and in fact the movement is designated with a uh, serial number here with a dash and says R and that indicates that this is one of these uh, uh, modified movements so that there's no mistake uh, in putting this which normally it would fit into a Yale but would be moving in the dial would be moving in the wrong direction now why it's designated as R I don't know because it does not wind to the right it actually winds to the left so maybe it's because the dial unwinds clockwise to the right maybe that's why they designated it that way these movements were made special for the replacement movements by Yale for or made by Seth Thomas under uh, uh, Yale's contract for Mosler and only a very few number of these were ever made just to fill in the gap uh, for the few months that Mosler found that they were unable to get their regular movements into production another interesting feature or fact to all of this is a movement I'm showing here which is by Bankers Dustproof which was owned by the Victor Safe Company and it appears that according to John Errol's book that Mosler may have bought Victor when it came out with its own time lock in about 1916 and you can see that there are some similarities between the two and in fact if you tip them over the uh, similarities persist and just to drive this point home you can literally again take this movement plate and the banker's dust proof is a direct fit into this design